So I posted a poll a little bit ago asking what you guys want to see first as I start filming more videos after coming back from my little break I took. And the one that won just by a little bit beating out Black Series Fixer was the Jedi Survivor 3-pack. This is a very, very awesome 3-pack. A little on the expensive side because nowadays when you buy multiple figures in a multi-pack, in the old days you got a bit of a deal, but now it's a little extra because exclusive. I don't I don't know man it's Hasbro uh, but yeah this is a really cool set honestly I think the figures are very cool one of them doesn't really seem very necessary but it's still a nice addition because I mean it's a trooper but uh, this set did come in this uh, this box uh, it says Jedi survivor on it uh, three action figures blah 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 it's very like the cardboard's very reflective for whatever reason you can see it says uh, the names of the characters, and all of them were carded inside this box. You can see my box did come a little damaged. It's got a little bit of a nick there. But you can see the characters do have a description if you want to read that in the different languages. And you can see images of the figures that you get. It's a nice package. Uh, I think it's kind of cool that they do the special action figure sets still. And it's cool that they actually decided to change the package a little bit by still giving them individual card backs. Because I think that's neat. I think the card backs are a very cool, important part of the vintage collection. I personally really like them. And I let's start off with the Scout Trooper. Let's set these guys back a little bit and start talking about his card back. Because I have been a bit of a critic of vintage collection card backs. Some of the ones they've done recently, especially for the Clone Wars, have not been good. But all three of the card backs in this set, they're good. <laughs> this is a cool image. I am digging that. Very nicely framed, very cool looking. I love how all of them use red. Uh, the trooper is a brighter red, and the droids are like a burgundy red. I kind of dig that difference. Uh, you can see it uh, says Jedi Survivor on it, which is really cool. I'm really excited for the game. Uh, not much of a gamer nowadays, but I'm excited more so for what it's going to bring into the universe. That's typically what I like seeing when it comes to new Star Wars media. Uh, you know, I'll probably watch a, a playthrough, and I might play it myself someday in like five or so years. But, looking at the figure itself, like I said, this figure, it's, it's a good figure. But it just doesn't seem very necessary. Because the only difference is a shield between this one and this one. And you may notice a couple other differences, uh, the main one being the visors, and I'm actually going to get into that. So this is the original uh, Gaming Greats Vintage Collection release of the Jedi Fallen Order Scout Trooper. I guess they have a shield now in Jedi Survivor. I uh, never played Fallen Order, so I don't know if they had the shields in Fallen Order. They probably did. Uh, there's some complexities with this figure we want to talk about a little bit more, but starting off with the visor... You can see this is my original one, and I actually decided to go in and fill out the visor with a black Sharpie, and it turned out really good. One, one of the only issues, you can see a tiny little mark, almost looks like a little hair. That's where there's this mold imperfection in the plastic, and there's this crease, and some of the Sharpie seeped into the crease. But other than that, that looks factory. That looks really good. Even then, little imperfections like that, I see them on factory paint jobs all the time. But that leads me over to this new one. And this one looks like this one when I got it. I really do like this newer Scout Trooper. I say newer, but I mean, it's been out for like 10 years. But they can't paint the visors right. They don't fill it in all the way. Like you can see with this filled in all the way, that looks spot on. That's a Scout Trooper right there. But with this, uh, it looks a little odd. I might decide to go in and fill this one in myself. Uh, but honestly, I, I kind of wish they would have done that. Uh, it is just like this one missing some paint details. Uh, like it doesn't have the black lines or the uh, little vent painted in. Um, all the rest of the paint, though, doing a little bit of a uh, Wii Toys see everything, uh, <laughs> is pretty much the same. The only difference, really, with these figures, the only one I've been able to spot between these two, are the inclusion of the shield, which is very cool. Uh, the ride batons pretty much seem the same. The shock effect seems the same. Like, it, it, it seems the same, pretty much. Uh, one of the only differences is the shield, and oddly enough, the new one includes the scout pistol. Now that's a bit of a controversial inclusion, because the Black Series version 
of this riot scout trooper with the shield does not include the pistol. And they cited that's because the cost of the shield was so great that they had to omit the pistol. They absolutely could not include it. They omitted the pistol with this one, but not with the vintage collection equivalent. So it seems like there's either some miscommunication at Hasbro or they just don't care uh, because they omitted the pistol with the with the Black Series one. But here it is right there. Clear as day. Now, if you're a hardcore uh, Star Wars three and three quarter inch collector like I am, you have extra pistols. You're fine. <laughs> but, you know, for someone that just wants to get something and have it complete right out of the box, it's kind of a shame that the original didn't and that the Black Series equivalent of this doesn't. But hey, honestly, uh, in my opinion, fully, fully color in that visor there and make it look a little less small and puny. And you've got yourself a really nice looking scout trooper. Uh, I do like the shield. It's very nicely painted. I really do enjoy that. I noticed that, though. That section is just still white, even though that's black. I don't know if that's intentional or not, or if I just have some error copy, but a little observation there. I do like how it attaches. It has this nice little handle and then a nice clip. And the clip and the handle are softer plastic, but both of them in tandem allow for a very nice firm grip on the shield. The shield just looks nice. Personally, I think this Riot Scout Trooper... Uh, looks best with the shield. I like them both, but I like the shield a lot more. I know there's a version of the Scout Trooper that has like a command pauldron. I might end up going through and uh, giving one of these the command pauldron. Even though I think I'm going to either fill in the visor on this one or do a head swap and make this one with the shield have the nicer looking visor. But yeah, I mean, it's the same Scout Trooper we've seen already. Very nice ball joint at the head because it was made to accommodate the speeder bike. Speaking of speeder bikes, there is that new vintage collection one coming out. I did not pre-order it because I think, <laughs> I think the price is kind of silly. Because if you think back to the Black Series uh, speeder bike and Scout Trooper, that was $40. Are you telling me that less than 10 years later, a vintage collection... Speeder Bike and Scout Trooper, significantly smaller, is like 45 A vintage collection one? I don't think so, Hasbro. I don't think so. <laughs> so, yeah, you can see very nice figure. I definitely do enjoy it. Uh, but uh, let's just talk about my favorite already. If you don't know me, Magna Guards are my favorite droid in all of Star Wars. So seeing this new version of the Magna Guard post-General Grievous with this cool robe and, you know, mysterious paint job, it's exciting. I have no idea what the story behind this one is. Uh, you can see it's like around rocks or something. It's exciting. It's very exciting. I'm very excited to see the story of this or these Magna Guards. I don't know if there's going to be multiple. I'm sure it's going to be an enemy type in the game. But still, it's really cool. And this figure, in my opinion, does an excellent job of replicating this Magna Guard. I have one issue with it. One single issue, and that's these soft goods around the neck. So how it's supposed to be, this is supposed to be like an extra robe that is going underneath this uh, over robe. So you can see if it's done properly... It's kind of tucked in, and you can kind of see how that is also on the card back. But oftentimes it kind of wants to pop out and look awkward and not really fit. I'm thinking I might go in there with a little bit of double-sided tape, and I think that should do the trick and lay it down flat. But honestly, I think the soft goods are very nicely done. They do have a little bit of deco on them as well. Again, very nice marking. I don't, I don't know the story behind it. I'm very excited to see that. Like, who are these guys affiliated with? I don't know. It's just so cool to see these Magna Guards in this really cool, like, I guess tan and dark red color scheme. I really like it. And another thing, while the Magna Guard is my favorite droid in Star Wars, the Vintage Collection Magna Guard figure itself is one of my favorite figures in the Vintage Collection line. Uh, it's an older Vintage Collection figure. Uh, I think it came out around 2011, 2012-ish. I want to say 2011. And it is stunning. Uh, one of my only issues with this one is that the color of the soft goods does not match the color of the plastic hood. Uh, but other than that, the paint job is excellent. It's an awesome figure. It's kind of funny. I think the clear domes for the staff have kind of yellowed over time. That's my only guess. Uh, but you can see the, the color of the electric little effects are kind of different. And it's the same figure, just repainted. And I think they did a great job repainting it. Uh, one thing I want to do is take these robes off, 
to give you an idea of the full deco of this Magna Guard, because I think it's really sweet. I'm actually kind of disappointed that this was a three-pack, because I don't really want duplicates of the other guys, but I kind of want a duplicate of this Magna Guard, because I want one with and one without this robe. Because when you take the robe off, you see so much more of like this deco, and you see how it extends to the head as well. It's a, such a cool Magna Guard, man. I'm loving it. And you may be wondering, why is this one of your favorite vintage collection figures? Well, it's because it's super poseable. So you got a nice ball joint at the head, ball hinges at the shoulders, at the elbows, swivels at the wrist. You got a nice ball joint at the waist. A ball joint at the waist. Back in the day, that's kind of unheard of. Ball joints at the hips, which give you enough out. Honestly, I don't think they would have really engineered this figure much differently if they were to remake it. I think this is pretty nicely done on its own. You do have hinges at the knees. I don't think you have swivels at the knees, unfortunately, but I don't really think that's something you really need with a Magna Guard. And you have nice uh, hinges at the ankles. I apologize, he doesn't want to stay in focus. He's such a thin little guy, my camera doesn't want to stay focused on him. <laughs> but you can see he's really poseable. Uh, you can get him with a double-handed pose with the staff. And he holds the staff really well, too, because it's kind of like ridged. And you can see, you can get that leg really spread out. Look at that. He'll, he'll stand like that. He will stand. This is such an awesome figure. One thing it does retain from the original copy is that the front armor and the back armor are still removable for literally no reason. I don't really know why they didn't just glue those elements in. Because I think that... Oh, there. Oh, oh, let's not lose that. I think it's very unfortunate those are removable. Because I have a duplicate of this Vintage Collection Magna Guard missing the chess piece. So, yeah. Uh, it it kind of stinks having a Magna Guard without that extra, like, torso eye. You know? I, I, I do kind of miss that if, you know, you end up with one missing that. But still, really cool figure, man. Definitely my favorite of the pack. And definitely one of my favorite Magna Guard figures. And... Thanks to Rust Belt Collector recently, expect an every Magna Guard figure uh, ever here soon. That's exciting. So after the slightly involved process of putting that robe back on, and I do have to say the hood does sit very nice, let's take a look at the last figure, and that is the KX Security Droid. Again, awesome picture. I love the K2SO style droid. I think it's really sweet. I really hope, a little Andor spoiler, I hope we see K2SO in Andor. He has not shown up yet but I'd love to see him. Uh, but uh, this this figure is really nice. I love seeing the Imperial variants. I know Hot Toys is making a version that showed up very briefly in, uh, what was it, Book of Boba Fett? That flashback happened? Or Mandalorian? I don't remember. I think that flashback might have been in Book of Boba Fett. Can't recall. Uh, <laughs> but in, either way, that little flashback that happened with the, uh, the KX droids, it'd be cool to see a, a version of that droid. But anyways, I think this one's really cool. I guess you can call this set the set of stun batons, because every character comes with a stun baton. Well, these are stun batons. That's a like a electro staff, I think. Uh, really cool weapons, though. I mean, they're made to deflect lightsabers. And, uh, I mean, given how the game is about a guy fighting with a lightsaber, it's nice to have some bad guys that can at least stand a bit of a chance against a lightsaber for a little bit, but <laughs> not for too long, let's be honest. So, this figure, as you can very clearly guess, this figure is not just a repaint, but also a retool of the K2SO figure that came out in the Vintage Collection a little while ago. And one of the main differences, oh, red, uh, yellow, that's one of the main differences. Uh, these skinny little droids, man, my camera just does not want to focus in on these guys. But I really love this backpack. This was an additional piece. Uh, you can see the torso itself. I'm pretty sure it was remolded to accommodate this uh, this backpack. I'm pretty sure the whole thing was modified. However, the, the physical appearance of it seems fairly similar. You can see one difference is that the joints, they were never see-through on the Vintage Collection version, but they didn't paint in the uh, the black for the this multi-pack one, unfortunately. It would have been kind of nice to at least give the illusion, but at least it's kind of there in the elbow still. Other than that, there's a lot of similarities with the appearance. The heads look pretty similar. A lot of the paint's pretty similar. I mean, it's not like a drastic, oh, it's a totally different thing. It doesn't have the weathering that K2SO does, but still, they're they're very cool. It's nice to have another version of this figure, because I really do like this articulated K2SO. 
And it's nice to have one that's not just K2SO, but rather like an Imperial droid that can fight my, you know, fight my Jedi or my rebels or whatever. It's just a cool figure. I really like it. I'm pretty sure this Electro Staff weapon is exactly the same as the one on the Scout Trooper. I think it's just a reuse of that. The backpack is not removable. Uh, like I said, they did totally remake the torso for that backpack. If this guy could stay in focus, that would be great. Uh, <laughs> man, these skinny little guys. My camera just doesn't like them. But the articulation, as you've kind of gotten a bit of a hint of, uh, if you know that old Vintage Collection K2, uh, you won't be disappointed with this either. It's got the Dumble, the Dumble, that's a word now, Double Ball Joint, <laughs> can't talk, <laughs> Double Ball Joint at the neck, uh, Ball Hinge, and Swivel at the elbows. Uh, the joints are kind of very tight and clicky, uh, like you can see this kind of thwoop, 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 uh, there's some detents, I kind of forgot that's how this guy worked. You do have in and outs at the wrist as well as swivels at the wrist have a ball joint at the waist or a uh, ball joint or whatever I just said. Uh, <laughs> ball joint at the hip. Similar kind of deal at the knee and similar kind of deal at the ankle. But you can see the joint is so tight, the leg wants to flex before the ankle joint moves. So be mindful of that. Don't break your KX security droid. He does hold the weapon very nicely. Uh, I kind of knocked it out of his hand, but it does sit in there very nice and secure. Uh, I say as I bump it out again. <laughs> but yeah, it's... It's a nice figure. Uh, it's definitely one I'm happy to add to the Imperial ranks. Is it one that I would have bought individually? Yeah. Yeah, probably. But, I, again, I don't really think I would want a duplicate. And with the price of this set, I I don't think I can justify, you know, getting another just to get another of that uh, Magna Guard. So there we go. Here is my review of the Vintage Collection. I keep wanting to say Black Series for some ungodly reason <laughs> of the vintage collection jedi survivor three pack it's very cool uh, two of these have been made in the black series as well however the magna guard uh, will be making his debut in the black series here soon but since vintage collection already has a mold of him we got this first i love the magna guard i actually will get the black series magna guard i'll probably get the standard revenge of the sith version and not the jedi fallen order version or jedi survivor i should say uh, probably won't get that, because I don't really like getting repaints of a line I don't really collect. But I'm very happy to have this Jedi Survivor Magna Guard in my collection. It is a very awesome design. It's very cool. I love it. Uh, and I couldn't decide if this video would be a Storm Central or a Droid District. So it's neither, for anyone asking. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Special shout out to the patrons of Patreon as well. You guys are super awesome. Thank you all so much for the continued support. However, I am thinking about changing up that support. Uh, I will let you guys know on Patreon here soon because uh, I feel like I should change it and uh, improve it because I don't feel like I'll, I'll get into it, the patrons. I just ramble too much. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.